What's good, y'all? What's good, Real Talk Squad? This is Miles. You're listening to Real Talk of Miles Johnson, where you know we always keep it real. We gonna keep it real today. The Eagles. I've been waiting all day to talk about this. Now, look, don't mind my background. I've been in Stanford, Connecticut. I'm working the Olympics. Yeah, 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 man, yeah, man. We going up right now. We going up right now. Trying to put on, trying to put on. But the work has still got to be done. And I told y'all, I'm still going to record content. I'm still going to edit content even after my shift. Maybe even before my shift start. So, look, come leave a like, a comment, subscribe. We grinding, man, and we always keeping it real. We gonna talk about this Eagles team. We're talking about the Eagles, bro. And some news came out that really, really pissed me off. It was that Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni are still working on their relationship. Apparently, Nick Sirianni and Jalen Hurts are a work in progress. What does that mean? What does that mean? So you're saying we're heading into training camp, into a new season, a new start, a fresh start. And these guys still ain't cool. Okay. At the end of this season, what was... The hot topic. What was the hot topic? The hot topic was if the Eagles are going to keep Nick Sirianni. They did. But let me tell you, the Eagles kept Nick Sirianni, and they don't even believe in the guy. Now, I know a lot of y'all are Philly. Y'all are Eagle diehard fans, and you want to be optimistic about everything. But if we're keeping it real, at the head coach position, the Eagles are bottom 10. And that might even be praise. Like, like I might even be guessing a little bit. It might be like bottom five. But I'm going to just say bottom 10 because the guy got the Super Bowl. But you're telling me, that Nick Sirianni and Jalen Hurts are still a work in progress. You're telling me that Nick Sirianni doesn't call plays. You're telling me that Nick Sirianni doesn't call the defense. So you have a head coach that doesn't call offense, doesn't call defense, isn't that cool with the franchise quarterback? What the hell are you doing? What what are you doing? Because I thought that his calling card was he was a CEO. I thought his calling card was that he builds that culture, that winning culture in Philly, that he connects with them, that that he motivates the players. Really, really, really. He can't even do that. He can't even do the thing that he was only good at. What happened in Hurts' first year as a starter when Nick Sirianni was calling the plays? They were on track to miss the playoffs. And then Shane Steichen took over. They went on that run in December, and they got to the wild card. Now, Nick Sirianni is that girl that, like, you see... You like, oh, you know, she are, she good looking. And then you see her friends and you like, wow, why did I choose the first one? That's what the Eagles felt like with Nick. Because it was like, you went ahead, you was all hype over Nick Sirianni, and then Shane Steichen come around and you like, I should have put him as the head coach. Now he in, now he in Indianapolis. I bet you the Eagles would not have had that Second half collapse last season if Shane Steichen was the head coach. 100% fact. And as long as Nick Sirianni is the Eagles head coach, 
There's a cap on what the Eagles can do. There's a cap because you have an offensive mind to head coach that doesn't call plays and reportedly does not connect with the locker room. And calling the plays is such a big thing because if the Eagles, best case scenario, they have a great season, win the Super Bowl, or at least get there, Kellen Moore is going to be a head coach somewhere because he's going to be looked at as the guy that transformed this offense. Nick will get zero credit. And obviously Vic Fangio is doing his own thing and he's calling the defense. So in the event that the Eagles have success next season and then Kellen Moore leaves, the Eagles are back at square one with trying to figure out who is the next guy to call plays. That is why I say Nick Sirianni as your head coach puts a limit on what you can be. I don't believe you can be a dynasty with Nick Sirianni as your head coach. Because you can't have all these moving parts, all this stuff. Like Sean McVay, he can he can have moving parts because he's still the guy who calls the place. He's still the guy. He the head honcho. Andy Reid, same way. Bill Belichick, Mike Tom. I mean, I mean, that's that's a whole different like stratosphere that Nick Sirianni hasn't even sniffed. So I'm even going to try to compare them. I'm actually upset that I even brought those guys up. But this is very concerning. It's very concerning. Here's what my hope is. My hope is that we have a phenomenal year Win the Super Bowl, Kellen Moore leaves, and it's like, all right, you know, yeah, we got to start back over, but at least we got to Super Bowl, or at least we won the Super Bowl. Right? That's my goal. Because I don't believe in Nick as a play caller. He hasn't shown anything. And the thing is, and this is really going to be the thing. This going to be a thing. <laughs> The Eagles' ownership and a front office doesn't even believe in Nick Sirianni. They don't. Literally, they gave the guy his job back by stripping away his power. Think about that, bro. Howie Roseman was the one that picked Vic Fangio. Howie Roseman was the one that picked Kellen Moore. Best believe if Nick Sirianni did not want to work with Kellen Moore, he would be fired. And if he did not want to work with Vic Fangio, he would be fired. So after last season, he was going along with anything Howie Roseman was going to do to keep his job. I don't blame him, but like, because, because again, like, rent got to give, I mean, not rent, but you know, like, yeah, these bills got to get paid. So I don't even, I don't even hold it to him, but it's like, that's the situation. You have a guy that is not respected in the organization. Now, Howie Roseman, they can say, oh, like, Nick, Nick is a great coach. Jeffrey Lord can say that, but I don't go by your words. I go by your actions. I go by your actions. And everybody in Philly knows, everybody in Philly knows that Howie Roseman had his footprints on every single coordinator hire. And you could argue that he was the reason why Sean Desai got fired last season. Oh, well, he basically got fired midseason. Yeah. And he was the one that put him at Patricia. For real. For real. I'll give Nick Sirianni credit. When stuff goes bad, he puts the blame on him. He probably does that better than anybody in the NFL. 
I'll give him that. No matter if it's a player, a coach, GM, owner, Nick Sirianni, when stuff hits the fan, he will take blame. He will take blame. I'll give him that. And A.J. Brown highlighted that. So that's something there, and he got he gets respect and credit for that. But it's more than just taking the blame, because it's like, well, why do you have to take blame to begin with? And it is a big cause for concern if you aren't on the same accord with your franchise quarterback. When your whole mantra, your whole your whole thing is that you the guy who builds the coach, you the guy that, you feel me? So I want you to think about that. Where would you rank Nick Sirianni as a head coach in the NFL? Where would you? Bottom 10, bro, at best. And I might have to do a little, like, a little ranking of all the best head coaches just to prove it to y'all that maybe top 10, I'm sorry, maybe maybe bottom 10 is actually being too nice. Maybe it's bottom five. Maybe it's bottom three. I ain't going to say bottom three, but I'm, I'm, I'm trolling a little bit. But I'm saying, but like bottom five, bottom six, bottom seven, that's very, very plausible. But I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to make that list for y'all. So I'm not saying like, the Eagles can't achieve their goals. And I do have them making it to the Super Bowl. But the Eagles' success next season is going to be tied to their coordinators. It's not going to be tied to the head coach. Just like how last season, the success was tied to the coordinators because Nick Sirianni is a non-factor. He simply is. And what happened in 2022? Our coordinators were off the chain, and we got the Super Bowl. You feel me? Like, but what, like, my last point is that when you see Sean McVay, Andy Reid, they're so elite, it does not matter who's around them. They're going to be straight. That offense going to be clicking. They going to do what they supposed to do. When you're that guy, you can it don't matter. It really it really don't matter who you got around you. Like you can't have no bums, but like you shouldn't be that dependent on everybody else around you. It's the same in basketball. Like if you that guy, you don't need to like have like the best player ever. Like you just need the complimentary pieces. That make you great. That's all you need. That's all you need. So I'm looking forward to what we do. And I'm hoping that Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni, that they mend this relationship. Because if Nick isn't good at his one calling card, the Eagles simply are doomed.